Hey guys, what's up? Um, today we're going to be working on a water outlet on this Chevy Cruze again. Um, while my girlfriend was driving, the bottom hose just snapped off. Uh, the hose is totally fine. What actually broke is this piece right here. This thing just cut in half and then this, the hose just shoot, fell to the side, all the cooling everywhere. So we're going to be replacing this. This is a Dorman uh, DL902A46. It's from AutoZone. It has lifetime warranty. Um, comes with your new uh, cooling sensor. Uh, comes with the little thing that goes on top of your hose um, as you can remember this is the hose that I fixed on the other videos um, as you can see it's not it's not leaking at all still but um, and that's your thermostat over there still good for now but this time we're gonna be fixing the water outlet guys all right all right guys first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the negative terminal on your battery Losing that 10 millimeter just a little bit just so you can get enough so you can get it out then we're gonna have to be removing all these hoses right here this big hose that leads to your throttle body a little clamp right there this sensor uh, just to get stuff out of the way so you can be able to reach those um, B10 one right here and one on the bottom so make sure that you get all three bolts loose and then you can be able to take it off all right guys first you push this little clip back it's just like a safety um, clip so then push down the tab let's see if can do it with two hands there you go. Get it out of the way. Now we'll, we'll be doing. I know some you guys are gonna have different clamps, those annoying ones. Um, I ha I replaced them already because I don't struggle with those anymore. So I have the regular clamps, easy to get to and everything. But uh, with the other ones, you would need some type of pliers, clamps, so you can get them out. But yeah, um, let's do this. Next thing you're gonna want to do is see this little clip right here. Remember, pull it out. Don't lose it. So try to grab it with two hands. One thing I would do is pull it out like this and just hold it. Lose it, remember? Okay, so here this little piece right here in the middle I think we're supposed to get it off so make sure you can get it off and don't drop it inside your engine bed take a look if I can do it there you go just like that you see that so it's grabbed around the hose like this All you have to do is just grab your fingers and push it back and make sure you're holding it with the other hand. Okay. Kind of a lot of residue right here from all the coolant drying up. Stay in there. 
Okay, so then all we're gonna do is just get this whole thing out. Just like that. Make sure we don't break this because then we're gonna have to order a new one. <laughs> previous video that I put this is what broke off the o-rings right there from the o-ring down is what would break and would stay in here that's why you would have to dig it out and replace the whole new hose okay and looks good now so hopefully it stays like that for a while so that you're out out of there. So either you can either use a flathead or I think those are a seven millimeter or eight. your hose get your uh, throttle body oh, no, it's not gonna work. so I'm gonna use a flathead Stubborn, so I'm gonna have to use both hands. Give me a second. All right, guys. But I was able to get it out. Just use both your hands. Um, see if you can just get it out of the way. Either turn it this way or that way I think it's better if you go this way and just hold it off right here mine's being zip tied by a, sh a lot of stuff so I'll see if I can turn it or something but nah I think I'm just gonna have to leave it down here or something and just wiggle it around mine's being zip tied by a lot of stuff so yeah that would do there's your bottom hose right there. Um, and then your one bolt right there, one under, and then the other one's gonna be here. We're gonna have to get those bolts out of the way. Um, usually, this oxygen sensor connector is. Uh, connected to right here but uh, when I first took it off I broke it so now it just hangs around like that uh, usually it's connected like this so just go down and we'll come off. now we're just gonna wiggle this close out have something under in case uh, some cooling drops and everything uh, I know sometimes hoses get stuck so I just grab a little clip and just break it loose like that just go around it around the surface and then you'll be able to pull it out um, yeah right. the bottom one and it just 
just fell down and I was just bleeding over here by my oil filter adapter. Um, it was just leaking everywhere. So I forgot to tell you guys is this one. This one connects to your cooling sensor right there. just has a little tab just hold it and pull it out get it out of the way or I guess you can just take the whole water out of it bring it up over here and then just take it out either way either way works so now just grab your E10 little one fourth ratchet this is the first time I'm gonna I'm using it so it's pretty cool so just make sure you get them loose got that one loose already the bottom one you can either use an extension or just little by little. And this one over here it's behind the oil filter adapter. Right there as you can see it. Alright guys, so now that you have everything loose, now we're just gonna wiggle it. Some cooling's gonna come out, so I have something down there that can catch it. Obviously, put over here. I just have a little catch oil drip pan. It's gonna catch the cooling, and then over here, I'm uh, draining all the cooling from the reservoir from the peacock. Um, should probably switch. can see this is where it connects to the engine block uh, this whole rubber that's around here we're gonna have to clean this whole surface up so for the new one to connect it's really good uh, so just make sure we clean all this uh, make sure we get all that clean out so when we go ahead and start it and check for leaks we're not gonna be like confused over why that clean is there. So yeah, make sure that's clean. And this was the difference between the new one and the old one. As you can see, I don't know how, but obviously it's a bad idea to use plastic on cooling stuff like this. This thing just literally deteriorated and just could have easily caused some major problems to my engine. Luckily, my girlfriend saw it right away, all the smoke coming out and stopped at the nearest parking spot. And this is a new one, lifetime warranty. I hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen again. So hopefully, that's why I bought a lifetime warranty one. At AutoZone, I can easily just go take it back. Give me a new one, all right. All right guys, so I just installed the new one. Uh, when you're putting in the new bolts, thread them, in, thread them in by hand first, all the way. And we're just gonna snug them. Uh, they're aluminum going into your engine. So you don't wanna crack anything, you don't wanna break them inside your engine. That would suck so much. So just turn them in all the way by hand. And then just grab your little Just snug him, okay? You get the idea. Just snug them. Don't they don't have to be so tight. All right, guys. So once you finish installing your water outlet and you fill up your reservoir. Uh, start the car up, make sure you get all the bubbles out, but if it's still overheating and you drain the, the, the radiator like I did, there's gonna be a little, like a bleeder valve kind of thing right there. You can use a Phillips, look right there, this one right here, on your passenger side of the radiator. Uh, you can use a Phillips, uh, a flathead, 
what I did was use the 13 millimeter it fits right on there um, and then just just open it all the way and that should let all your air out once you'll know that all the air is out when you start when coolant starts leaking out of here okay guys so what I did was fill fill the reservoir up first um, I opened this this little valve thing um, and then I turned on the car and make sure you keep an eye on your reservoir and all the air is gonna start coming out of here and once you see that coolant starts coming out of here just plug it back in and then you are you'll be all good all right guys and that's how you'll be able to fix your water outlet issue as you can see I've had it for uh, two weeks already and still no leaks that's always a good thing thank you guys thank you for watching